It's hot out there, but let's blow them off the line of scrimmage. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. While your average New England Patriot autograph of today won't claim the market value of Beantown favorite Carl Yastrzemski, the members of this up-and-coming franchise are making their names a little more familiar to the Foxborough faithful these days. Just two years ago, the Patriots tied for football's worst record. But already this year, they've knocked off the Jets and Steelers and are looking to take care of another AFC power today. Wide receiver Stanley Morgan hopes to be of assistance to a man who is surprising some by leading the conference in passing. That gentleman would be none other than Steve Grogan, whose credentials put him ahead of the fella usually atop the passing parade, today's opposing quarterback, San Diego Charger Dan Fouts. As usual, Fouts has the Chargers far ahead in league aerial numbers, yet the club only last week achieved a 500 record. The Chargers need some defense if they are to do much better, plus steadier results from a running game that features James Brooks. It's been nearly 14 years since San Diego last beat New England, and they'll be on the lookout for that elusive win today. From Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, it's the Patriots and Chargers in what should be a topsy-turvy NFL Game of the Week. If you are a football fan who doesn't like to wait for results, the Chargers just might be your team. They can push the ball downfield at nearly the speed of light and did so on their first possession of the ball game. Tight ends Eric Seavers, number 85, and number 80, Kellen Winslow, caught two key passes in the drive that sent San Diego to their first score of the afternoon. It took San Diego only about four minutes to get that first touchdown. A burst through a crowded middle by number 21, running back James Brooks. So far, nothing unusual. The Chargers score with ease. Ho hum. What else is new? How about some defense from one of the conference's youngest and most beleaguered units? Well, at least in the early going, San Diego's much maligned defenders did make things a little tough for New England, holding the Patriots scoreless for most of the first quarter. The Chargers start four rookies, plus two others with only a year's NFL experience behind them on the defensive squad. Naturally, that means mistakes will be made. But you'll also see some rookie enthusiasm and an occasional big play as well. What it came down to was an excellent first half performance by the Charger defense, as the Patriots were rarely able to get much going. But after their almost effortless initial touchdown drive, San Diego found New England's defense a tougher road to hoe the second time around. The first major development of the day came with San Diego's running attack. Star Chuck Muncie was hurt in the game's early minutes, so James Brooks would have to shoulder the entire ball-carrying burden the rest of the afternoon.
It was now no mystery to the Patriots who had run the ball, so they keyed on Brooks play after play. It finally paid off late in the first quarter as Brooks fumbled, and New England had its first of many golden opportunities of the game. Again, the young Charger defense held, so the Patriots settled for a field goal from recently acquired Fred Steinfort. The official signaled the kick was good, but he might as well have kept his arms raised in the scoring position because as quickly as the Chargers scored the last time, they were even more efficient on their next trip. It took a mere 42 seconds and just three plays to get another touchdown. Brooks took this screen pass for a quick 26, and then Fouts hit reserve receiver Bobby Duckworth, number 82, with a 40-yard scoring strike. It was Duckworth's fourth touchdown reception of the year. He's also averaging 26 yards per catch. Not bad for a part-timer. Duckworth's deed had upped the Charger advantage to 11. And if things continued this way, this game would be settled in a hurry. But now it was time for New England to make some noise. Conference passing leader Steve Grogan was about to orchestrate the first sustained Patriot march of the game. By mixing run and pass, Grogan was finally able to move on San Diego's defense, although sometimes by fortuitous circumstances. But Patriot bounce passes soon gave way to picturesque Grogan rainbows to favorite target Stanley the Steamer Morgan, number 86. New England showed it could run the ball too, especially on gutty individual efforts, such as the one shown by number 30, fullback Mosi Tatupu. seven-play drive was then capped by number 33, Tony Collins, and quickly the Patriots were right back in the thick of things. Collins, the Patriots' leading rusher, would gain nearly 100 yards today against the Chargers, but he would have ample assistance, not only on his post-touchdown shenanigans, but on ball-carrying duties as well. The Patriots had other runners to move things on the ground, but San Diego, without Muncie, continued to go exclusively with James Brooks. moved effectively on the outside and ran well up the middle too. Following solid blocks by such folks as all pro guard Doug Wilkerson, number 63, Brooks was a tough cookie for the Patriot defense to crumble. And while Brooks did his job on the ground, Dan Fouts continued to move through the air, finding number 89, Wes Chandler, for a key third down completion. New England wasn't giving up any big plays now, so Fouts took the short route instead. These high percentage passes gave him some high percentage statistics. 
15 of 19 passes completed for 210 yards in the first half alone. After Kellen Winslow survived a gang tackle from what seemed like the entire New England roster plus the equipment manager, James Brooks capped the first half scoring with his second touchdown of the game. San Diego took a 21 to 10 halftime lead into the locker room. But neither they or people like New England head coach Ron Meyer had any idea how dramatically this contest would turn around in the second half. The second half began with San Diego seemingly well in control. Dan Fouts was nearly perfect in the first 30 minutes, and there was no reason to believe that a change was at hand. Fouts' first third quarter throw was picked off by number 25, Rick Sanford, and suddenly the Chargers fell victim to the turnover bug. On San Diego's second possession of the period, Fouts fumbled the snap from center, and linebacker Clayton Wysu, number 53, recovered for New England. Patriots did not capitalize very well on their two early golden opportunities to get back in the game, managing only one field goal to cut San Diego's lead to 21 to 13. But their aggressive defensive play was making its mark. Number 21, James Brooks, all 175 pounds of him, was taking a beating as the Chargers attempted to establish the running game without Chuck Muncie. San Diego could not get its ground game going, and when Fouts dropped back to pass, he found that he couldn't escape the men in red either. Dennis Owens, number 98, sacked Fouts for an 11-yard loss, as the Chargers continued to have all kinds of problems getting their offense going in the second half. Finally, Fouts returned the Chargers' offense to its normal routine by hitting Roger Carr, number 81, for 23 yards. It was only the beginning. Fouts marched San Diego downfield with short, crisp passes to his exceptional group of receivers. Following the completion to Carr, the San Diego quarterback found veteran Charlie Joyner, number 18, for 15 yards. And then he dumped a pass in the left flat to his tight end, Kellen Winslow, number 80. The Chargers had a first down and goal to go at the Patriots' 10-yard line. When they reach their opponent's 10-yard line, they always score at least a field goal, right? Wrong. San Diego's first two plays gained eight yards to the two, and that was about it. New England stopped Brooks on third down, and the Chargers, nursing a 21-13 lead late in period three, decided to go for the touchdown on fourth down. Normally, this situation calls for 230-pound Chuck Muncie, but he was on the bench with an injury sustained in the first half. So Fouts tried to do it himself. Fouts did not sneak into the end zone. New England had held the Chargers, first and goal from the 10, and San Diego came up empty. What was interesting about the final four plays that head coach Don Coriel called was that they were all runs. The Chargers' passing attack lay dormant just when they seemed to need it most.
Now it was up to San Diego's defense to hold back a Patriots offense that was no doubt ready to take advantage of this sudden swing in momentum. The Chargers had done a good job so far shutting down Grogan, the AFC's top-rated passer. But the veteran quarterback worked his way out of trouble, teaming up with Stanley Morgan for 17 yards. Grogan then went to his running game, the third best in the NFL. And Tony Collins, number 33, darted up the middle for 15 more yards as the fourth quarter got underway. Grogan was now mixing run and pass beautifully, and a quick visit from Lady Luck didn't hurt either, as the Patriots mounted their longest drive of the game. Number 83, Cedric Jones caught the pass that Chargers linebacker Lyndon King should have, and New England had a break they desperately needed. Time was becoming a factor, and the Patriots had to score twice to win. King's inability to hold a sure interception helped New England trim the Chargers' lead to 21 to 16. But more than that, it put the Patriots one score away from going ahead. It did not take long for that to happen. A James Brooks fumble was scooped up by Rick Sanford, and he raced all the way to the Chargers' one-yard line before being forced out of bounds. San Diego's third turnover of the second half proved to be costly, as this time the Patriots capitalized, Mark Van Egan diving into the end zone for the go-ahead score. Ten minutes remained in the game, and New England led for the first time 23 to 21. Before it was over, the Patriots would make it a romp. Since his 212-yard game against the Jets the third week of the season, Tony Collins had been rather quiet. But in the second half against the Chargers, he was once again finding his rhythm. Collins' gliding runs and a well-executed swing pass from Grogan to Mosi to Tupu, number 30, helped the Patriots sustain their second long march in the fourth quarter. At the San Diego 10-yard line with three minutes left in the game, Brogan gave the ball to touchdown Tony Collins. Collins' second score of the game and sixth rushing touchdown of the season put New England comfortably ahead 30 to 21 and initiated another high five extravaganza. Another look shows that Collins began by following the block of lead back Mosi Tatupu, number 30, and then smoothly flowed outside, away from the pursuit to score rather easily. Collins' 10-yard touchdown run appeared to wrap up New England's third victory of the season, and Patriot fans wasted no time in beginning the celebration. After all, the Patriots, with but 2.13 left in the game, had shut out the NFL's number one ranked offense the entire second half. San Diego's high-powered offense never got on track in the final 30 minutes, most of that due to a Patriots defense that smothered the Chargers at every turn. Even when Fouts had time to pick out his three brilliant receivers, the Patriots' coverage forced number 14 to eat the football.
turning point in the game was New England's goal line stand in the third quarter. When the Patriots knew they could stop San Diego, they received a boost of confidence that helped account for 24 fourth quarter points. The final touchdown is Steve Grogan's sneak with 30 seconds remaining. To stay in the playoff picture, the Patriots needed to defeat the Chargers, a task not many people thought possible. But a solid team effort paced by Tony Collins' 94 yards rushing, 75 of them in the second half, and two touchdowns, plus a defense that forced four San Diego turnovers, proved that the Patriots are capable of doing what it takes to win. Dissension problems of a year ago have faded as New England showed once again that it 